Welcome back to the homestead in eastern Oklahoma. I'm Bear with BearIndependent.com in today for RefugeMedical.com. Uh, we are continuing in our conversation on the March algorithm, massive bleeding, airway, respiratory, circulation, head injury, hypothermia, everything else, as well as TCCC, tactical combat casualty care. And so we've already covered massive bleeding, airway, respiratory, circulation, and head injury, hypothermia. Today we're talking about everything else. What exactly does that mean and why was it added to the March algorithm, which is now March E? It used to just be March. What's the deal with the everything else? Well, there's some critical things in the process of caring for a casualty that need to be addressed. And so that's where the E comes in. It's the everything else. Again, during this phase, we're going to recheck the casualty, make sure again that we've stopped all the critical bleeds, that we have a patent airway, that we have good respirations, that we've addressed any potential hypothermia, which by the way, is not just in a cold environment. Uh, it's entirely possible to get hypothermia on a day like today where it's hot and humid in Eastern Oklahoma. So we're rechecking the casualty. This is also an opportunity if you have monitoring equipment, whether this is a pulse oximeter or uh, a blood pressure cuff or a stethoscope or any type of instrumentation to go ahead and take vitals for the patient if you have that stuff. Some of our larger kits at Refuge, like the Adventure Kit, comes with a pulse oximeter. The Stomp Bag comes with a pulse oximeter, a thermometer, um, pressure cuff, a stethoscope, a, a, a pupil light, a, a, a bevy of surgical tools and instrumentation, right? And so if you have that stuff available to you, take vital signs. Uh, so you want to be monitoring the patient at this point. You should have already called in Casavac or Medivac. If you haven't, you need to under the everything else guidelines. Get somebody rolling to get the casualty to a higher level of care. To that point, you should be prepping the casualty to move. If you have a quick litter, you should be moving the casualty onto a quick litter. If you have a backboard, even better, get them onto a backboard. If you have a gurney, well, you probably already know this stuff. Although you'd be amazed how many people don't that are medical professionals. Uh, what if you don't have any of those? This is part of why you should come to training so you can understand how to move a casualty with one person, two people, five people. How do we move a casualty in such a way using only what we have available to us in the back of a vehicle or as we're standing here so that we can maintain C-spine immobilization, keep the patient's head upright, maintain a patent airway, all of those things, right? Again, come to class, whether it's refuge training or any other qualified medical professional that's teaching trauma medicine, come to class because this is information, not instruction. And I understand I've hammered that in every video, but I don't want you to get a false sense of confidence here thinking you know this stuff because you heard it from some guy on the, in on the internet. You don't know it until you can do it with your own two hands without thinking. And so, again, you wanna be prepping the casualty to move. We're getting off the X, right? Well, how are we getting off the X? What do we have rolling? What assets do we have to move this casualty? How do we elevate to a higher level of care? You also, during this period, wanna be addressing minor wounds. Maybe there's some cuts and scrapes and abrasions that are not life-threatening but we can continue to work the March algorithm. We can continue to render aid to this person to um, you know, maintain their well-being, give them a higher um, quality of life in this situation. There's, and proactive medical intervention does tons for morale and mindset. Uh, for the casualty to know that somebody is here that is competent, that is well-equipped, that they know what they're doing, that whole thing can change their outlook. And that mindset and that heart set goes a long way towards the survivability rate of the casualty. And so it might seem stupid, but if they have a scratch on the back of their hand, cool, what can we put on that? We'll put a Band-Aid on that. Well, I don't have a Band-Aid, but I've got a small piece of gauze and some tape, so I'm gonna tape that up, or I'm gonna wrap some Curlex around that, whatever it might be. Uh, so addressing minor wounds, um, super recommended. It's great for morale. And also we want to limit the incidence of infection as well. And then if you have a casualty card, you want to document what's been done. Uh, again, 
march is covered under the good samaritan act you are allowed to perform march and i believe it's almost every state of the country although check your local uh laws and regulations because a lot of y'all states are all messed up but in almost every state in the country you are 100 percent allowed to perform the march algorithm with no liability for you so if you're a teacher or a principal or a school bus driver or a co-worker or an office manager or a softball coach or whatever it may be or an innocent bystander you are allowed to medically intervene per the good samaritan act to work the march algorithm which again is why you need to be trained on the march algorithm but uh, you want to document what you've done you know and part of that could be did i fill out the time tab on my tourniquet nope i didn't i'm going to go back and document that you may have a piece of paper like this and i'm going to write down Casualty is a 200 pound approximate white male incident occurred at 1407 hours, motor vehicle accident, two vehicles, black Ford F-150, white Ford Taurus, uh, intersection of bad and worse, uh, medical intervention, tourniquet applied, upper left arm, wound pressure or wound packing and uh, pressure bandage applied, lower left leg, head injury, suspected TBI, clear viscous fluid, yada, yada, yada. Document all of that. And then when EMS shows up, here you go. This is what I did. This is what I saw. And you should snap a picture of that with your phone as well. And if you're still on the phone with EMS, with dispatch, you should be talking to them as well. Hey, because uh, it's their job to write stuff down, by the way, just so that you're aware. Like that's part of what a dispatcher does. So as you're on the phone with them, yep, we got a 200 pound white male. He's approximately 30 years old. He's got brown hair. He's got blue eyes. He's driving a black Ford F-150 license plate is XYZ123. We're at the intersection of bad and worse. Uh, southbound traffic is halted because the white Taurus is in the road. I was able to move the casualty from here to that and just talk to him. Literally, while you're rendering aid, take your phone, put it on speaker, throw it on the ground and just talk to him while you're working. And they're gonna hear you and they're gonna write stuff down. Hey, dispatch, mark time, 1407, tourniquet applied. Roger that, upper left limb, tourniquet applied. It's a Cat Gen 7. Uh, hey, dispatch, I'm wound packing now. Um, yeah, lower right leg. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like an arterial bleed, but it's pretty bad. It's a deep laceration, so I've got some combat gauze stuff in there. I'm applying a pressure bandage. If you could go ahead and mark time on that, that's 1410 hours. Yada, yada. Sir, what are you wearing? Uh, I'm wearing a green shirt, and I've got a long beard with a bunch of gray in it because my kids are heathens and I lead a stressful life and I've got blue jeans on and I'm driving a white one ton pickup truck and blah, 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 blah. Okay. So that documentation portion of the E in the March algorithm is important as well, because when this casualty is elevated to a, liar, a higher level of care, the more information that you can give them about what you did, the better it'll be. And even though Everything you're doing is covered under the March algorithm, covered under the Good Samaritan Act. If for any reason there was ever to be some type of court case against you for intervening, because some of y'all, again, live in sketchy states, we have documentation. What I did is perfectly legal. This is when I did it. This is how I did it. I was trained to do this. I have my certificate from refuge training. I've completed this course, which is nationally post accredited cleat certified cleft certified t cole certified conforms to the naemt 2022 standards it's based upon the specifications set for by the uh, committee on tccc and their guidelines it, it conforms to the national stop the bleed protocols i did all of this stuff i know what i'm doing i was trained in the doing of it here's the documentation of what i did so during the e portion everything else again if we have instrumentation, we're gonna perform some monitoring. So we're gonna get some baseline vital, vitals on the casualty at this point. We're gonna to prep to move the casualty because we're not staying here. So again, quick litters, backboards, uh, body carries, multiple people, single person. How are we gonna do that kind of stuff? We're gonna address any minor wounds so that we're continuing care on the casualty. We're building morale, we're building rapport, and we're going to work on our documentation. Make sure that we're talking to dispatch, make sure that we're writing down what we've done, figuring all that out, because you may not remember after the fact, in the moment, in the heat of battle, all this stuff is going on, but after the fact, hey, when did this tourniquet go on? Hell, I, I have no idea. Why did you wound pack? Uh, well, I wound packed because I saw what appeared to be an arterial bleed in the lower right leg. Copy that. So 
And unfortunately, even though all of this is covered by the Good Samaritan Act, we live in a litigious society. And so documentation is important as well. That's the E in the March algorithm. In our next video, we're going to discuss March pause, which is pain management, air, uh, antibiotics, wounds, and splinting. And that will wrap up our mini series here on this YouTube channel on the March algorithm and TCCC. If you know somebody who needs to see this, please share it with them. Educators, church security, pastors, school principals, superintendents, school bus drivers, office workers, people. If you have blood inside your body and if you're breathing oxygen, you need to know how to do this stuff. So please share this out with everybody you know. If you're new here, please subscribe, ring the little bell icon that helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for supporting our American-made small businesses, Refuge Medical for the Kits, Handmade, Made in America, Guaranteed Forever, and RefugeTraining.com. You as a civilian cannot get a higher level of training anywhere else in the country than from RefugeTraining.com, and we travel the country. So, bugs everywhere. I appreciate y'all very much. Get trained, whether it's from us or anybody else. Get a good trauma kit, whether it's from us or anybody else. Bless y'all. Shalom.